Welcome to our mini broadcast for this 10th Sunday after Trinity. I'm going to start by reading the Gospel from Matthew 15. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them, they are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, Explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Well, Jesus offended the Pharisees because their tradition had become an end in itself. It was a religious system in which points could be scored or lost. Judgments were made according to it. People could be classified as to how well they lived by it. But it was all superficial. It never went below the surface. The issue of defilement or being unclean in God's eyes is real, but it's not ceremonial. Defilement is not about washing hands, nor about the kind of food we eat. Defilement is about what comes out from our hearts and our mouths. God longs to bring change to us, but we need to be real about ourselves and real with him for that to happen. We need to abandon the idea that basically all is well and ask for help. Peter Scazzaro writes, the Gospel says you are more sinful and flawed than you ever dared believe, yet you are more accepted and loved than you ever dared hope, because Jesus lived and died in your place. Selwyn Hughes wrote, since the fall, everyone born into this world arrives with a deep sense of insecurity, inferiority and insignificance. Moreover, it is impossible for people to have a clear sense of their identity outside of a relationship with God. He continues, identity depends on three things. A sense that one is unconditionally loved, 
a sense of one's value and a sense of meaning and purpose. For some, their childhood, their upbringing and their life experiences bring great help and blessing to such a wobbly start. For others, it is as though the situation is only made worse. But as none of us have received or experienced these three things perfectly in our lives, we all have problems to differing degrees that only God can heal. And we need to be in touch with the problems and determined to go through the pain barrier towards healing. So we see from the first part of this day's reading of the need to be honest about the state of our hearts. From the second part of our reading, we see a lot about growing in faith and not taking offence. You may well have been offended by Jesus' comments about the Canaanite woman. It's something that people often do take offence at. But as we look at her, in her situation, we see that she chose to have faith. The way she addressed Jesus demonstrates that she had been listening to stories of hope. When she got absolutely no response from him, she didn't give up. When she was implicitly referred to as a dog, she actively engaged with the metaphor. It's as Jesus is testing her, because he is delighted to say, woman, you have great faith. And her daughter back home is healed at that very moment. So it's interesting that whereas some people today and some commentators criticise Jesus as being uh, very offensive, this woman did not do so. This woman had the right perspective. She was not going home empty-handed. She persisted. I wonder what you or I would have done in that situation. Would we have been put off? Would we have felt uh, put down? Would we have taken offence? Well, faith persists and is not put off. It doesn't take offence. It doesn't have oversensitive toes. So I wonder how well we know our hearts, both in terms of the bad and the broken aspects of them. And I wonder what kind of faith we have. Is it robust faith? Faith that persists? Faith that isn't put off, however strange the response we seem to get from God may appear to be at first. We're going to listen to a song now that I'm playing and Emma is singing. And it's a song of confidence that someone has, that they know they're secure, they know they're valued. They know their identity is that of being a child of God because they put their faith in Jesus and taken him personally. So let's listen to that song. You unravel me with a melody I'm no longer safe to fear. 
joining us again this weekend and now a blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.